welcome to Have I Got News For You in a week when our politicians have shown a sad lack of restraint. In the news this week, following Tony Blair's example, William Hague visits a nursery school in Leeds to explain conservative education policy. <laughs> in Antarctica, after being given a torch for his birthday, a drunken David Attenborough reveals a sadistic streak. <laughs> And in central London, a mugger makes the mistake of pouncing on Madonna after she's been kept up all night by the baby. <laughs> on Ian Hislop's team is a TV presenter who says his worst moment was vomiting out of a 14th floor hotel window, although worse for the bloke on the 13th floor, looking up to see where the noise was coming from. Keith Chegwin. Thank you. And with Paul Merton tonight, a former TV executive and current director of Camelot, so in the spirit of Camelot, we've decided not to pay him tonight, <laughs> Michael Gray. <laughs> uh, round one sees us right on the opening round front, both questions featuring a montage of this week's election news footage. Paul and Michael. <laughs> Is that moment that made you proud to be British? Here, Here it is. comes. Yeah. yeah. Well done! Yeah. The Eric Cantona memorial blow. Yeah. <laughs> but it's our version of sort of Jack Ruby and Lee Harvey Oswald, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when Prescott <laughs> lashed out? <laughs> punch, I admired him greatly for doing that. And where were you? Which, where was I? When he lashed oh, out. I've got an alibi, don't drag me into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's a marvellous look on his face, because he threw the egg and just started laughing and going like that. Because he didn't, he didn't, you know, any other politician, probably in the history of politics, <laughs> certainly in this country, would never have sort of like just turned around and gone wallop, you know. <laughs> Someone at the back said, stop it, John, he's not worth it, but by then... <laughs> you see him? <laughs> Covered the ground well, 61-year-old, punches his weight, wallop, straight in. <laughs> I found... I found, this is absolutely true, I found this quote from an interview that Prescott did for The Guardian in 1994, and I'm absolutely quoting him verbatim. Yes, I can get angry, says John Pre Prescott, and I often have more reason than most to do so because the machine tends to be working against me. I don't get a fair whack. <laughs> I don't pursue vendettas or punch people on the nose, said John <laughs> 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 And what was Blair's reaction? John will be John. John yeah. is John, I think. John is John. Yeah. I mean, less yeah. word. Fits in a headline. And evermore better. shall be yeah. so, yeah. Next yeah. week, Lennox Lewis versus Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> <laughs> I know who my money would be on. Um, <laughs> well, on you. It wouldn't be on anywhere else. What do you mean, your money? <laughs> <laughs> and who else had a bad day, apart from Prescott? Because it's well, not He didn't have a Prescott. bad day. He had a fantastic day. <laughs> he won. <laughs> He won the fight. Don't you? Yeah. The jury's still out on that, isn't it, really? No, no, they're not. No, there are no charges against either of them, actually. The whole yeah. thing's been dropped. If you charged the man throwing the egg, then you'd have to charge Prescott. That's right. So mm. I think they're both being released and saying, fair fight, it was a draw. <laughs> 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 and Blair's saying, tough on Prescott, tough on the causes. <laughs> It's going to be a bit of a problem, though, when we're talking about yob culture in the future, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, she led with the left. Yeah. Very un New Labour. <laughs> it's one of the most exciting things that's happened in politics in years. <laughs> What, someone hitting someone? Yes, <laughs> someone hitting someone. Yeah. So are we all in favour of John Prescott here? No. Yeah. Right, yeah. Keith. Yeah, I think... No, I think he's a thug. I, I don't like the man. He'd be very good on It's a Knockout. He would, not he? <laughs> I was on Question Time with Prescott once, and the, and the question was about boxing, and he was all in favour of it. And at the time, I agreed, which was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> 
he will probably sort of admire it in a way because he is a sort of like they, people sort of think that he, he's not being stage managed. He's sort of he's a, an emotional man, and um, you know, okay, he, he, he lost control for that moment. But um, you know, I think some people sort of think that that was a, showed a human side to him. Yeah, well, and, that, and when his fingers on the nuclear trigger, it'll be great. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Or isn't going to be triggered by somebody throwing an egg. <laughs> so, what were the pop stars doing in that bit of VT? Because they've had something to do with Labour this week. <clears throat> well, Britney hit Britney, me one more time. Hit me, hit me one more time is what Britney Spears yeah. hit. I'm not quite sure. She sent a message of support to Alistair Campbell, the only one he's going to get. <laughs> and Jerry Halliwell was in the uh, party political, I think. She was. She Jerry was Halliwell. playing the spoon in the cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know how uh, she described the Spice Girls, at least, in 1997? Uh, uh, Thatcher's children, wasn't that's it? That's right, true Thatcherites. Yeah. Well, no wonder she supports Blair, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was supposed to have been uh, on the front pages when Prescott, in fact, got all the coverage? At the Labour Manifesto. Mm -hmm. But it was a clever piece of work by the Labour spin doctors <laughs> that they managed to keep their own manifesto out of the <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> Well, he was just lucky with Prescott, because otherwise that woman in the NHS hospital would have been on the front page. There you go. And another member of the public coming up and saying, you're useless. And he would have gone, boom. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'd have called John and said, get here right away. Yeah, <laughs> problem. Bit of trouble, John. John. Pop over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is round one of Labour's election battle with uh, John Prescott to the fore. Uh, speaking to a journalist in the bar at Real Theatre afterwards, John Prescott said, I was attacked by an individual and I clearly defended myself, adding, did you just spill my pint? <laughs> <laughs> After the uh, Daily Star broke the story about Alastair Campbell's good luck message from Britney Spears, uh, he chastised the paper, saying, I think Daily Star readers will be more interested in issues like economic stability <laughs> and... <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> got it. <laughs> Wrong on so many levels. <laughs> According to their uh, new manifesto, if Labour win the next election, the BBC will be given major funding increases. Not that, according to BBC sources, this will in any way affect <laughs> output <laughs> over the forthcoming weeks. <laughs> Ian and Keith, mm -hmm. uh, your bandwagon. Hey. And for flying Fion, there's his dad. Oh, um... Oliver Letwin. Letwin. And that's someone else. <laughs> <laughs> this is the others. And um, this is the balance question put in by the BBC. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, well, we have to. Yes, they have to. The Tories got into trouble because that man, Oliver Letwin, who no-one had heard of before, mm -hmm. um, made a remark about tax and then disappeared. He said that there <laughs> might be 20 billion tax cuts, mm. um, which isn't in the Tory manifesto, and it was a bit of a giveaway. And the Labour Party put out a poster saying, does anyone know Letwin's whereabouts? But being the Labour Party, they spelt whereabouts wrong. <laughs> so, uh, where has Haig succeeded where Prescott failed this week? Well, he, he hasn't hit, hit anyone. Yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, someone did throw an egg at Haig, but... Uh, he avoided it. That's right, and it hit a pensioner. Mm. But... <laughs> and who's been helping Haig this week? Been rallying to his defence. Um, no oh, oh, his dad. dad. Mm. Which wasn't... His dad said that Haig would probably lose. Which is a bit mean of your own dad, really. <laughs> didn't say it wasn't quite that bad. He said it would be a miracle if you won. <laughs> <laughs> and Fion, Fion, we never quite know how to pronounce her name. Uh, well, why don't you find out, Ongu? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, she sort of points out photo opportunities. Ah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So if they see a baby, this happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that Haig on the right? <laughs> it, it looks like one baby trying to inflate another baby's head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the Lib Dems, we ought to mention them. <laughs> well, I think they're the only party that said they're going to renationalise the railways. It's pretty sensible, isn't it? Are you a Liberal Democrat? No, that was balance. Oh, right. <laughs> and so the most interesting part of uh, Charles Kennedy's week, did you see this? when he Manifesto? Visited? Uh, yes, was that interesting in any way? Not really. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but he did uh, go to a nursery in Islington and read them uh, a story. Did he hit any children? Brown beer, <laughs> brown beer, what do you see? Oh, no. I see a red bud 
looking at me. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> he can babysit for me any time. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the opposition party's attempt to steal a few headlines. Uh, all three main parties were out this week in their campaign buses. Labour's is called the Strong Leadership Bus, the Conservatives is called the Common Sense, and the Lib Dems is called the Number 42 to Ilford. <laughs> William Hague's aunt, Mary Jefferson, told the Sunday Times if he can get Labour's majority down to less than 100, then William will have won. <laughs> no doubt in the same way that Arsenal won the FA Cup last week. <laughs> and uh, we won a BAFTA. <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, at the end of that round, uh, the scores are like the eyes on a Picasso portrait, with two on each side. <laughs> Round two features amusing tabloid headlines and the search to find some. Paul and Michael, your vicious spin, you lying lot. Is this the ongoing story about the couple that um, they, they won the lottery but then they lost their ticket and they didn't claim in time, is it that one? It might well be that one, yes. And this was a story alleging that Camelot, who... <laughs> <laughs> Camelot, who wouldn't pay out or couldn't pay out mm. because it they was were after too mean. time. The rules... No, the rules... <laughs> no, no, the Lottery Commission would not let us pay out. Right. Cool. On legal advice. On legal advice. Right, right. But there is, a, <laughs> there is a newspaper... This is a newspaper story alleging that Camelot had actually paid somebody outside of the time period previously when they had lost their ticket. So the Commission wouldn't let you pay? No, not allowed to. Not Damn. allowed to. Not allowed to. <laughs> You'd probably be itching to pay that three million mm. pounds. We would like to have done, yes. Right. Most so you're definitely. a non-executive director? Non-executive right. director. What does that mean, exactly? Well, a bit like a B-Day, you know, you don't know what it's for, but it adds a touch of class. You know. <laughs> yeah. Ian will tell you later what a B-Day is. <laughs> Day, wasn't that two days before D-Day? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, they, they didn't claim within the 30 days. That's right, isn't it? Correct. Um, which you have 30 days to claim if you've lost your ticket, but if you've found your ticket, you're allowed 180 days. I'm not sure. I can't remember yeah, exactly. Those the are the rules. If you say so, I guess. Yes. Have you got a lottery ticket? You seem to be very concerned. <laughs> 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 and uh, Camelot have offered them something, in fact. Have they? Counselling. <laughs> Have you been sitting in our board meetings? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Counselling. Counselling. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news, then, that uh, Camelot are to be sued by the Tots, uh, who lost their uh, lottery ticket. The Tots maintain that if Camelot had printed all the rules and regulations on the back of the ticket, the situation would never have arisen, presumably because any ticket that size would be impossible to get out of the shop door. <laughs> According to uh, one newspaper, the most common reason for a winner not claiming their prize is not checking the ticket, losing the ticket, putting it in a washing machine and having it eaten by the dog. <laughs> How unlucky can one person get? <laughs> Ian and Keith, mm -hmm. uh, your revolution stops with all men are bastards. Isn't this an advertising campaign? From divorce lawyers. Divorce lawyers. Mm -hmm. They've decided to go for positive um, headline-grabbing ads. So there's one ad called All Men Are Bastards, mm -hmm. which goes up in um, <laughs> women's toilets and women-only clubs. And then they've got another ad which says Ditch the Bitch, <laughs> which goes up in men's toilets mm. and in drinking holes and bars and things. Drinking holes? <laughs> <laughs> it's where wildebeest gather in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one off just off Leicester Square. Yeah. <laughs> you can't move a bison on a Friday night. <laughs> And who's complained about this? Um, I think everyone has, haven't mm. they? Well, uh, Relating people. I mean, this isn't a terribly positive attitude towards divorce, is it? It's just lawyers trying to get people to fight each other so they can make even more money. It's going to start a trend, I think. Do you think? With insurance companies. Really? Have you been shunted from behind? <laughs> <laughs> I think they already or, have those uh, in certain telephone travel. kiosks. <laughs> <laughs> And how has uh, the government tried to counter the increase in divorce this week? Um, no, they're going to send us all a magazine, aren't they? That's right. No. Yes. Yes. Married Life, it's called. It's a rough guy. Married Life. Yes. The government's putting this out. Who's the editor? Robin Cook, is it?
Yeah. And there's a quiz to uh, test how well you know your partner. No. Yeah. <laughs> Starts off with when is her birthday? Tricky ones first. And <laughs> um, what two records uh, would your partner take on uh, Desert Island? Mm. Which two would you take? Uh, Agadoo, uh, nice one, Fantastic and uh, the Birdie song. <laughs> It'd be quite nice. <laughs> You wouldn't last long on that desert island, would you? You'd turn yourself mad. No, but just imagine the things I could do. Mm. I could push that pan up up, up a tree. <laughs> so nearly said something else then. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't choose anything by uh, obvious pseudonym then? Me? Yeah. Obvious pseudonym, a release record called uh, Keith Chegwin for a day. No. They have. We can hear it. Is sadly. it complimentary before you play it? Keith Chegwin for a day. Keith Chegwin for a day. Have you never heard that before? No, never. Is it ironic? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the new government-funded magazine Married Life has various bits of advice for newlyweds, uh, one of which is to go to bed at the same time, uh, usually when you hear the words, and now for a party political broadcast. <laughs> Which uh, trouble and strife means uh, at the end of this uh, dialogue, well, uh, both teams cool. seem obsessed with having the same score, sharing as they do four points each. Hey. Uh, round three then sees the odds on the panel getting the right answer shortened dramatically to four to one, uh, given that it's our odd one out round, just one per team this week, Paul and Michael. Your men of the moment are Billy Connolly, <laughs> Matthew Grimson, Enid Blyton and Keith Chegwin. <laughs> yes, what's the cricketer's name? No? Matthew Grimson. Matthew, Matthew Grimson, yes. yeah, he, he got caught showing his middle stump in oh, a photograph. Yeah. That team photograph last year? Yes, yeah. he, was, he was caught with his middle stump hanging out at the back of the photograph. And the photograph was printed up and nobody mm. realised at the time. I think he yep. also had his penis there as well. <laughs> Billy Connolly's recently gone nude, hasn't he, for to comic relief? Comic relief, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, Keith, of course, uh, went uh, did a nude show for Channel Five, whatever it was called, the Naked Show, whatever. I only had a small part in the show. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't did uh, you watch it? I'm afraid I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people who watched it missed it. <laughs> 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 Cases where widescreen TV might do you a favour. <laughs> um, Enid Blyton. Well, I think we well, see. We know that Keith's gone nude. Uh, Billy Connolly's gone nude. I've got a feeling in the back of my mind that Enid Blyton was a naturist. So you will have to pick. <laughs> well, I say the one cricketer else. then, because um, he wasn't naked. Yeah. Not intentionally. He wasn't mm. completely naked. Is the wrong answer. Ooh. Oh well, uh, then it's Enid Blyton then. Is the right answer. Mm. Very good. Mm. Very good. Because all the others have exposed themselves. They have. Yeah. Uh, they've exposed themselves in front of camera. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the exception of Eden Blyton. Yeah. She liked to play tennis naked. Did she? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this uh, Naked Jungle programme then, Keith... Did you watch it? Uh, I didn't see it. I, uh, we did try to get um, tapes of it, actually, but uh, we were told that the, the person who presented it wouldn't allow it. That's me. To be sure. Yeah. Apart from other people... Did you want to show it around the office, or was it for here? We just wanted to show it to the nation, so here it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> British television is the best in the world, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, Channel 5 not suggest that you wear shorts, though, and you said, no, no, I want to go naked? No, they said uh, wear shorts. When I got there, I found out they were genuine naturists. I thought, sod it, why not, who cares? 11 o'clock at night. Tuesday. Mm. Well, all that's a massive viewing figure. You say genuine naturist, what, what is a fake naturist? <laughs> <laughs> like wear a hat without telling anybody. <laughs> Skin tight gloves, they'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> but did he get complaints? Oh, the Daily Mail had a go at me. Uh, you took over from him as, as the nation's top pornographer, didn't you? Yeah, that's okay, have you, you taken your clothes off then? No, no, he no he's pointing four. at Michael, I think. <laughs> 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 yes, he used to be called pornographer. I was in chief. the pornographer in chief. I think mm. that mantle has been passed on. <laughs> Do you refute the allegation? Absolutely, yes. Pornography on British terrestrial free to air television is a crime. Mm. <laughs> so. <laughs> but so documentaries do... and hard hitting exposés oh, of the sex a, industry, not If it's really. essential to the plot, it's fine, yeah. yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Matthew Grimson, you also mentioned uh, the Leicestershire cricketer. Mm -hmm. um, he posed for this team photo. There he is. 
Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and what did he do at the end of last season? Did he retire? He did retire, yes. They went to teach in a public school. Oh. <laughs> Glad to see standards haven't dropped since my day. <laughs> Was he headhunted? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the answer is that they've all exposed themselves in front of a camera with the exception of Enid Blyton, who nevertheless enjoyed the odd game of naked tennis. During her career, she produced over 700 books for children and one poster for Athena. <laughs> According to the Scotsman in the public eye, Billy Connolly is brash, funny and confident, but in private, there's a part of him that's forever four years old. <laughs> and now we've all seen it. Ian and Keith, uh, <clears throat> your teenage heartthrobs are... Michael Heseltine, George Bush, Sean Woodward, and Alfred Pennyworth. I think this is a butler question, because Sean Woodward, who's the Tory who's yeah. become a Labour MP for St Helens, the big joke about him is that he's so left-wing he's got a butler. Um, <laughs> and his wife's a millionaire Sainsbury, and he'd never been to St Helens before. But anyway, he's the mm. new Labour MP, or the new candidate. He'll probably get in. Is Alfred the butler from Batman? Alfred, yes. Yes. Michael Heseltine is very rich, and he's got a butler, and George Bush, I think, was brought up with a butler. So they've, they've all had butlers except Alfred, who is a butler. Is the right answer. Very yes. 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 the point to name the actor who played the butler? In uh, the... Provided you get the TV and film, yes. Right, Michael Goff in film Very and good. in TV, Alan Napier. And an extra 40... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, isn't it? In, uh, an extra 45 <laughs> points, if you can tell me who the cousin of Alan Napier is. Oh, no, I don't know. He was an English actor, clear. I know, with the white moustache. Who his cousin was, I don't know. Uh, Neville Chamberlain. Really? Was he really? Mm. Mm. He could have got 45 points <laughs> Surprised you with Alan Napier, though. It's yes, not very it impressive, was, but was, there we are. Uh, uh, I love was... this game. When I finally get a question right, Paul gets two more points. <laughs> <laughs> Still, mm. Still that showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> so How Sha would you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean Woodward, then. Yes, you mentioned him. He's defected, of course, from the Tory party. Uh, for what reason? Um, he wants to be in government. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's been parachuted, I think that's the expression, isn't it? Into, yeah, well, the, uh, the Labour Party denying this, they say there was a free and open selection for who do you want for, a, you know, the St Helens constituency. Do you want a millionaire who's never been there before? Of course you do. He's your first choice. Mm. <laughs> he has now been there. He went there on Wednesday, then. He went to St Helens. Right, well, they should vote for him, then. Yeah. Well, then, <laughs> he hasn't really known it long enough to uh, prepare for the general knowledge quiz that he was uh, given about the area on Newsnight. Do you know who St Bernard is? <laughs> Let's play the pub quiz. Do you know who St Bernard is? Go on. The St Helens mascot. Well, no, th this is... This is... Oh. oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously a big rugby league fan, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Woodward's brother, Leslie, has had an even more eventful 18 months. According to one newspaper, for Leslie's 40th birthday, Sean arranged for him to have a sex change operation, which was a surprise to Leslie, as he'd only asked for a CD. <laughs> What does it cost to have a sex change operation? I don't know how much money it costs. Mm. Keith, have you had a sex change ever? Mm. <laughs> OK. Right. But look, judging by your programme on Channel 5, you're nearly there. <laughs> <laughs> the appeal of our final missing words round can never be overestimated. A clutch of headlines grabbed from their articles, including some more or fewer from this week's guest publication, the ever-popular Religious Conference Manager. <laughs> So, prepare for what are fun to be around? Seventh day Adventists. <laughs> <laughs> religious conference managers. Uh, religious conference managers is the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> Next, finger lost in what? Methodist. <laughs> Battle with horse. A <laughs> uh, dyke. <laughs> I lost it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no letterbox is the answer. Oh, uh, they can be this, nasty. 
This, they can. This is a, a schoolboy's finger which was sliced off by his friend's oh. letterbox, uh, who then hoovered it up in case his mother found it. <laughs> Next, uh, Portillo says what to what? Foo to goose. <laughs> Heaven wouldn't. to Betsy. <laughs> Hello to Sailor. <laughs> Knickers to roller coaster is in fact the right answer. <laughs> is, he, is he losing it? Uh, no, this is Michael Portello who chose not to indulge in the joys of Splash Canyon, uh, which is a ride in a theme park before you get in the other ride. Right <laughs> Next, Blair doesn't what, says Agent? He doesn't do sincere. Uh, doesn't pay his paper bills on time. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Doesn't do panto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he does, really. Oh, yes, he does. He does. Yeah. Doesn't need minders. Uh, and finally, parasitic worms are what? Found on civil list. <laughs> <laughs> are eating each other. It is to do with eating. <laughs> are good for you. Are good for are you. Good for oh, right. oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is an example of a parasitic worm? Oh, uh, uh, where do we begin? Yeah. <laughs> Let's try Camelot. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, chance remarks mean at the end of tonight's Bagatelle, mm. this week's lottery losers are Ian and Keith with mm. seven. This week's Camelot directors are Paul and Michael with nine. Uh, but uh, before we uh, give them the rest of the night off, the domestic chore of our caption competition. <laughs> <laughs> Your place or mine? <laughs> Could you speak up? I'm hard of herring. <laughs> oh, please, stop the fish puns. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you give me a haddock. <laughs> I think we should move on to the next one quite quickly. <laughs> so anyway, he came in with a right and the left came straight across. <laughs> On which energetic note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Keith Chegwin, Paul Merton and Michael Grade. And I leave you with news of disaster in the North Sea as John Prescott and Anne Widdicombe launch their campaigns on the same oil rig. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Blair regrets allowing Peter Mandelson and his partner Ronaldo to design Labour's election posters. <laughs> And in Inverness, there are fears that the local distillery is polluting the nearby river. <laughs> Good night. Never fear, the comedy is still coming here on UK TV Documentary. We go even further back in time. Have I Got 2000 for You is on the way next.